I think with any career, there are lessons to be learned. When you're in a career like a music career, which as a creative and those of us who are creatives know that uh, it's it's a career that can throw a lot of curveballs at you. A lot of things are unpredictable and it's it's the same with our band. I suppose one of the lessons learned is that you need a lot of funding to sustain something like this. So um, as we go along, we're we're getting better with how to market ourselves, how to position ourselves as a brand that should be supported and for people to patronize what we do. So I think just having a team behind us that can also push the behind the scenes and administrative stuff is one thing that I wish we could get together. My name is Kokui and I am a singer. I'm a musician, I'm an ideation consultant as well, and I'm co-founder, executive producer, and lead singer of the band Kokui. My childhood is a pretty interesting one, I suppose. It's a mixed bag. So I was born here in Accra when I was a baby. Uh, my family moved to the UK and uh, lived there for almost 10 years, then moved back here to Accra continued schooling, a bit of primary, secondary, then went to the US for my tertiary education as undergraduate and master's, and then moved back home to Ghana. So been a bit up and down, um, had mixed up accents here and there, <laughs> but I'm a Ghanaian girl through and through. My career journey hasn't been that straightforward. Um, I remember as a child, I always thought I wanted to be a teacher because I really admired my teachers and uh, I thought teachers knew everything. So if teachers are teaching us everything, then they must be the, like the greatest people in the world, right? Um, then at a point, I wanted to be a lawyer and uh, that pretty much stuck with me through secondary school. It wasn't until I went to university that I discovered, or in fact, I like to say music discovered me. So when people say, oh, why did you choose music as a profession? I normally say, I didn't choose it, it chose me. It wasn't my intention to study music at that level, but it, it happened along the line. So um, by profession, I actually did study music and theatre, uh, music to master's level. I studied voice, so I'm actually a vocal specialist and studied, studied classical music, opera. So that's the type of music or the style of music I generally sing. Um, but these days we do a lot more fusion, so we call our genre afro opera and I'll tell you a bit more about that. So my career journey, it's been interesting. I mean, I've worked um, even in the public sector for a few months. Uh, I've worked in the media for several years um, as a presenter and a producer of television and radio content. And that has been wonderful as well. Um, I've acted, I'm currently acting in a series on DSTV and medical drama, Ghana's first medical drama, woohoo. Um, I play an obstetrician gynecologist I've been an editor of a fertility magazine. So I think that kind of helped with my current acting job because I had to interact with doctors and fertility specialists. And now I'm using that knowledge on TV. So um, I've had several different roles, but I think all of them have merged into this crazy character that I am now. And of course now I am a freelancer and a practicing musician. The band Kokui, um, in December 2021, we decided to put up a Christmas concert. Now, when I say we, like-minded musicians, and um, in our musical community, a lot of us are soloists. We collaborate on projects and we move on. After the first concert we did, it was called Nubian Noel, so Christmas themed, very small, intimate, but people loved it. It was after that experience that we decided we should probably formalize our relationship. So the band Kokui was born out of that. And together with my fantastic partner, Michael Dodu, who's our music director for the band Kokui, we decided to just make it a regular thing, get the members of the band together to form something that would be more permanent and work on this genre of Afro popera, which we deal with, which is African, popular and opera or classical genres all mixed together. 
when you talk about how many members are in the band cookie it's, it's a bit of a tricky question because as i said we're all soloists and freelancers and we come together for this so even though we are a band now we still have our individual projects and we still people have jobs you know people work even some out of our craft so at any given point in time you could have maybe five instrumentalists seven instrumentalists we have nine backing vocalists but we may not have all of them at every performance you know so it's uh should we say a fluid number a fluid number but the core members um michael keyboard and music director eddie also keyboard we also have an eddie's a trumpeter faisal trumpet joshua drums cornelius bass guitar emmanuel lead guitar and flawless violin so those would probably be our core members then the backing vocalists there are nine of them and that's me the name of the band we were thinking of what to call ourselves um we went through a few options um then we put it to a vote on the platform we have whatsapp group um i put a few options there and everyone seemed to like the band kokui so i just suggested it and they said yep we like that we're going with that simple done so afro popper is really a combination of the genres that we the band members are all familiar with and we all perform so i have a classical background and in fact all of our instrumentalists are trained they, they read music you know um so we have should we say a bit of formal training in our musical backgrounds right and most of that is from a classical standpoint um for the pop that's for popular so music that is african that's afro and we are african and even though we have that formal training we think well there should be that african vibe to what we do because that's who we are and we need to represent our culture our music as well so i should be able to sing handel i should be able to sing puccini verdi but i should be able to sing papo thompson as well you know that's our stuff i should be able to sing uh, jh and kitia i should be able to sing hey stone boy if it comes to that you know so mixing that with classical music african music and music that is popular is how we came up with afro pop so that we don't limit ourselves and box ourselves in because let's face it there's so many so much great music out there that we could explore why not we're african people we're colorful we're, we're, we're talented we love music and we're actually trendsetters african music is at the basis of most genres that are you know performed around the world so when you think about it like that then yeah why can't we have an amalgamation of different genres and make it something special so that's why our our particular genre is afro pop because our style is like a mix of different styles maybe it would be difficult to pinpoint one particular band but i think if you think of a band like osibisa i think they they incorporated quite a bit of obviously african but then pop as well so they were one of those bands that was one of Ghana's best exports that went out there and showcased african music to different audiences that you know people could relate to their music and their style and the language and and all of that so i think that's probably an obvious one right um but we're inspired by so many different performers and, and and musicians i mean michael can can play a piece of music for me by yani and if people are familiar with a musician like yani he's quite esoteric and out there and not the, a musician who's on everybody's lips all the time but the kind of things he does with his music is amazing you know or andre rio as well and his orchestra they are fantastic and they've brought classical music to the masses obviously luciano pavarotti was one of the first classical musicians who really had that popular appeal and took opera to people to love and he collaborated with a lot of pop musicians you know if you if you look at some of Pavarotti's performances you can see him performing with you know, people like Celine Dion and you know other popular musicians so i think we're inspired by a lot of different musicians it'd be hard to pick just one but those are just a few We have recorded music and if you go to most of the major streaming platforms and search for the band Kokui or Afro Pop Anthology you'll find some of our recordings. Um Afro Pop Anthology because obviously an anthology is a collection of work. So we we put it out in volumes and they're themed. So so far we've done two volumes. 
The first was on Negro spirituals, which is the music of African American slaves, which passed down through generations. We did a recording of that, and that was mainly Michael, me, and two of our instrumentalists,、um, Eddie on trumpet and Flawless on violin. The second is Afro Pop Anthology Volume Two, Ga Heritage.、Um, we have quite an affinity for Ga music because I, I would say most of us, especially the instrumentalists, are either full Ga or part Ga, and we speak Ga. And there isn't a lot of Ga music that is performed as much as, let's say, Akan music, and、um, in English, you know, with the pop stuff. But we just thought. We'd love to have a specific focus of Ga language and Ga music, so、uh, we released that anthology as a heritage and a nod to to Ga music and Ga culture. You can find that one there as well. It's it's pretty fun. So those are the two anthologies we have so far.、Um, we've got some other videos on YouTube of things that we record sometimes spontaneously. We just get together, record something, and put it on there. So check us out on our social media platforms, the band Kokui. And on streaming platforms as well, and Afro Pop Anthology, you'll find our music. When you talk about best moments or performances for the band, we've had a couple.、Um, obviously, our big concert,、um, Nubian Noel, has been great. The one we did at the end of 2022, we did at the National Theatre.、So、it was a pretty big deal. It was a lot of work. It was our first large-scale ticketed concert, and it, we were actually quite amazed at the turnout, and people loved it. And that was.、Um, I would say the biggest one we have put on so far. We also performed at Gazmila's Abele Fest, which was done in August last year.、Um, obviously, he focuses a lot on Ga culture as well, and he brought us on board to perform some music there. That was fun.、Um, I think it exposed us to a new audience, and we really enjoyed ourselves.、Um, so those two stick out, I think, for me so far. If we were to perform in any part of the U.S. or the Caribbean, I'll start with the U.S. first. In the U.S., Atlanta, no question. I wouldn't even think twice. I went to school there for my undergrad. It would be lovely to go back and perform there. So Atlanta is a city that I love.、Um, it's rich in history and culture.、Um, there's a lot of African American culture there as well, and a huge music scene. And、um, yeah, just a lot of. Versatile people and musicians there, and I think our music would resonate very well with the Atlanta audience.、Um, for the Caribbean, I mean, why not go to Jamaica? I mean, like Jamaicans feel like they're Ghanaian, and I think they are. We've got that connection with them, so it'd be nice to go to our Caribbean cousins and share our music with them. And of course, reggae music is huge there, and reggae music is also again we experiment with different genres. So imagine having a mix of what we do. Plus a bit of reggae, it would be awesome. So Atlanta and Kingston, Jamaica, here we come. The band Kofi is coming to you. If I had the capacity to fix any of the challenges in Ghana's musical industry, I don't know where I would start because I think there are a lot of challenges.、Um, but then again, I must say, since you say Africa, I think there are some countries that are doing better than others. Ghana, we could do a lot better with our structure for our music industry.、Um, the royalty system needs to work because that's people's intellectual property, and that's what's going to feed them for the foreseeable future and even the next generation. So, if people can confidently know that if I'm producing something and my work will be set in stone for life, even my children who come after me can benefit from my work. Then at least you'll be more comfortable as an artist, knowing that the work you're doing is truly going to be valued, and you'll benefit from it. We see in other jurisdictions it happens. People who died decades ago—I mean, look at the Elvis Presleys, even Michael Jackson—their their music is still working for them. Every year they're earning millions of dollars for music that they wrote in the '60s and '70s, and even before that. So if we can get that set, then I think for the the number of people who are in this creative industry in the music industry, it will benefit them more. And that goes not just for us in front of the mic, but even for people behind the scenes, for producers, for songwriters. It will protect everyone in the music value chain, so that if you produce a track, that's that's yours. Yeah, that's your property. You know, you still earn from that every time that track is played, right?、Um, or even every time someone samples it. Um, that's one of the things I would fix, and then we would have a proper association or 
just like in other jurisdictions, you know, there's an academy, proper academy for things like the Grammys, etc. People have to belong to these unions in order to reap proper benefits from it. That structure doesn't exist as it should here, at least in Ghana. Um, if we look at South Africa, I think on the continent, that's a really great example for an industry that works properly. Nigeria, our brothers and sisters in Nigeria are leaps and bounds ahead of us in the organization of the music industry. And you can see the difference now, how they're making waves globally because they've been able to establish a proper structure for their industry and the quality of music also shows. I think we're getting there step by step. Hopefully it can accelerate so that we can benefit quicker and better from our music industry as well. There's so much potential there. I want our government to have policy that supports us. I want them to recognize the potential that exists. This is an answer to our unemployment situation. It's an answer to so many issues that we're facing in this country. Let's focus on growing our music industry and by extension, our entertainment industry so we can benefit from it. I think with any career, there are lessons to be learned. When you're in a career like a music career, which as a creative and those of us who are creatives know that uh, it's, it's a career that can throw a lot of curveballs at you. A lot of things are unpredictable and it's, it's the same with our band. I suppose one of the lessons learned is that you need a lot of funding to sustain <laughs> something like this. So um, as we go along, we're, we're getting better with how to market ourselves, how to position ourselves as a brand that should be supported and for people to patronize what we do. So I think just having a team behind us that can also push the behind the scenes and administrative stuff is one thing that I wish we could get together. But obviously that also comes with having resources to compensate them. So it's just a matter of being able to afford the structure that we want. But I'm confident that with time, we'll get there and we'll get that. And we're doing, we're not doing too badly so far. From the band Kokui in the near future, expect more great music. Expect to see us touring. We have a big goal to move outside of our borders and take our music outside of Ghana and expect to see us doing things like training people and trying to leave a legacy, especially in formalized music training. Um, there, are, there are some schools that have cropped up that are doing well to train young people on how to play instruments, how to understand a bit of music theory. But I think there are other aspects of the business that are important for us all to learn more about. Even the legal aspects of being in the music business, you know, we need a bit more orientation with things of that nature and marketing, etc. So watch out for the band Kukui. We'll be doing a lot of work. Hi, my name is Kukui. I'm the co-founder and lead singer of the band Kukui. And you are watching Face to Face Africa, the premier global black voice.